Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. So we've done strongest canonical, legendary, and mythical Pokemon on this channel before, according to in-game lore, not just the stats, and it got me thinking, who are the strongest regular Pokemon in every region? If we are to take the Pokedex at face value, that is, which we probably shouldn't. The Pokedex is basically like glorified fan fiction. It's a load of nonsense most of the time. But hey, for kicks and giggles, let's just see who the strongest Pokemon are in every region, not counting legendaries and mythicals since we already did those. Yes, I know Mewtwo is in the thumbnail. Congratulations, you've been played. Now, Kanto has a lot of ludicrous dex entries to sort through. Excluding legendaries and mythicals, it is the largest crowd of Pokemon, and they of course have been around the longest, so there's plenty of Pokedex misinformation, oops, I mean lore, to look at. The first Pokemon that stuck out to me was Raichu. Said to deliver electric shocks at 100,000 volts, 10 times the voltage of the next best electric type Jolteon, and even Electivire from Gen 4 only exerts 20,000 volts. But is that really true? Almost every electric type can learn Thunderbolt, which in Japanese is called 100,000 volts, so shouldn't every electric type be able to discharge that many volts? If anything, it just makes Ash's Pikachu all the more impressive. Since its Z-move, 10 million volt Thunderbolt is 100 times that of a regular Thunderbolt. That seemed pretty impressive until I looked at the voltage of an actual bolt of lightning, which averages about 300 million volts. That's 30 times more powerful than the strongest electric Z-move. Plus, it's really hard to measure the actual destructive power of electricity without also knowing the amp or current. Voltage alone isn't a ton to go off of, so I'm having to write off both Pikachu and Raichu. So, what about the poster child of strong Gen 1 fighting types, Machamp? He's pretty strong, he can throw a thousand punches every two seconds, and in his Gigantamax form, its punches are said to have the same destructive power of a bomb going off. But then there's a direct counter to that. Cloyster's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Sun. Its hard shell cannot be shattered, not even by a bomb. It is also said that nothing is powerful enough to even open Cloyster's shell. But Pokemon Stadium 1 says otherwise. According to that game's decks, Kingler is able to open the shells of Cloyster with its 10,000 horsepower pincer. So using Cloyster as a point of reference, we can safely determine that Kingler is indeed canonically stronger than Machamp. There's just one other titan of strength it has to measure up against, Blastoise. Starting in Pokemon Silver and being referenced in numerous other dex entries, Blastoise's water is said to be capable of punching holes through thick steel. This is actually something that can be done in real life, as a water jet cutter can similarly cut through steel spraying at a PSI between 20,000 and 55,000. However, a water jet cutter also uses abrasives in the water, so it's not pure water that's able to cut through steel, meaning the PSI of the water being launched through Blastoise's cannons is likely much higher than 55,000. Not to mention, actual water jets are very small and concentrated. Blastoise is like a geyser in comparison. So who wins the war? Blastoise's 55,000 plus PSI cannons or Kingler's 10,000 horsepower pincers? Well, I'm not MatPat, and I was a communication major, so I have no clue how to compare PSI to horsepower. So I consulted some of my nerdy engineering friends from college, and they all gave me the same response. Horsepower isn't an actual measurement used to calculate crushing power, so Kingler's strength is pretty much completely made up. Added to the fact that Blastoise's cannons likely reach PSI levels much higher than our comprehension, I believe there's a 99% chance that Blastoise just outright wins this matchup. Pretty much anything that stands in front of these cannons is getting ripped to shreds in an instant. Not to mention a long-range projectile is just way more useful than slowly walking up to something, putting it in your big meaty claws, and crushing it. So despite all the absurdity of the Gen 1 dex entries, Blastoise still comes out on top by a wide margin. Alright, so Gen 1 ended up being really long-winded and hard to explain, but fortunately for us, Gen 2 is probably the easiest one we'll get all day. Partly because most Gen 2 Pokemon really don't have impressive Pokedex entries, aside from Heracross, who can apparently toss an opponent 100 times its weight, and this number becomes 500 times its weight when it Mega Evolves, meaning Mega Heracross can lift something that weighs nearly 69,000 pounds. Nice! But yeah, it's still Mad Cargo. I think we all saw this one coming. Magcargo's body temperature is twice that of the surface of the sun, which means that if Magcargo exists, we don't. It's that simple. For Gen 3, Blaziken is a good leadoff, with legs powerful enough for it to jump over a 30-story building, which equates to roughly 100 meters or 328 feet, Blaziken's legs exert a monumental amount of strength. If you get kicked in the face by this guy, 
you do not have a face anymore. Blaziken even demonstrates this jumping ability firsthand in the Deoxys movie, so this one actually isn't a complete lie. This certainly is enough to make Blaziken the strongest canonical starter, not named Blastoise, but is it enough to be the most powerful Pokemon in all of Hoenn? The answer is no, not even close, because Agron will restore the environment by planting new trees and flowers after disasters occur, and taking care of the environment is the most powerful thing anybody can do. Yes, this is actually its Sapphire Dex entry, but still, there is another even more powerful than that, if you can believe it. Gardevoir. To protect its trainer, it will expend all of its psychic power to create a small black hole. Now I know, it's a small black hole! How much power could that really require? Well, it's theorized that the minimum required energy to produce a black hole is 39 orders of magnitude greater than the energy available at the Large Hadron Collider, which is the world's largest high-energy particle collider, by the way. And that's just the energy needed to create a micro black hole. Gardevoir is presumably creating a noticeable to the naked eye black hole, which certainly means that Gardevoir has the most powerful psychic powers of any Pokemon in existence. The sheer amount of energy this Pokemon can exude is amazing. Despite being the generation that introduced the literal god Pokemon, I was kind of surprised at just how tame most of Gen 4's dex entries were. Even Rampardos, who's like the embodiment of pure attack, the most destruction the Pokedex ever records is the time it destroyed a skyscraper in Pokemon Moon. Still impressive, I just feel like we can go a lot higher. Rhyperior caught my attention as well, not so much from its destructive capabilities, but more defensively. As it's said that Rhyperior's carapace can withstand volcanic eruptions, which typically peaks in temperature around 2300 degrees Fahrenheit or 1200 degrees Celsius. But ironically, there is a fire type that's actually capable of burning through Rhyperior's thick shell. Magmortar, who launches fireballs that burn at 3600 degrees Fahrenheit or 2000 degrees Celsius. Fire is pretty much just the best weapon you can excel in. There aren't any lingering details we need to address like amp, or current, or PSI, or horsepower. It's just really hot and destroys everything. The only thing more destructive than that is the force that you can use to smash that like button and that subscribe button too if you haven't already. Just thought that would be an interesting fact to share. Fortunately for us though, Gen 5 has a lot of destructive Pokedex entries. Crocodile is able to bite through a car, Excadrill can dig through steel, Darmantan can destroy a dump truck, Caracosta can destroy a tanker, Bufalant can destroy a train, Braviary can destroy a car. I'm sensing a pattern here, and it's that Gen 5 Pokemon really hate public transportation. A bit fitting for a region based on New York, I can't say I blame them. But there is one that clears all of these guys easily. Gigalith. In Pokemon Black, the dex reads, compressing the energy from its internal core lets it fire off an attack capable of blowing away a mountain. I don't know about you guys, but leveling an entire mountain is just slightly more impressive to me than destroying a bunch of vehicles. If you don't believe me, then don't worry, we'll have some numbers behind this winner in a little bit. So well done, Gigalith, I'd say you win Gen 5 pretty handily. Hopefully we can take a break from vehicular destruction now. Well, let's take a look at Gen 6. Pangoro can send a dump truck flying- alright, never mind, we're skipping that one. Chestnut, like Cloyster, is apparently able to withstand a bomb blast, and this is further backed up by its ability Bulletproof. And Greninja, like Blastoise, is able to compress water into shurikens that are able to split through steel. <sighs> I'm tempted to say let's just end it there, but let's see what the rest have to offer. Anyway, Pyroar has breath that reaches over 10,000 degrees?! So, it breathes the sun's temperature. It's another mag cargo almost. I'm like less than 20 Pokemon into this gen and we already have diet versions of Gen 1 and Gen 2 strongest. Clawitzer can apparently shoot seawater with enough force to break through a tanker. All right, Greninja, sorry, you're out. And Gudra is able to throw a punch equivalent to that of a hundred pro boxers, not even using its fist, rather using its horns. What are they feeding the Pokemon in this region? This is insanity! Now, here's the thing. Pyroar with its sun temperature breath is probably the strongest here, but the dex is kind of vague in the way it uses it. Apparently, Pyroar won't use it against prey, and even against foes, it just says it threatens them with its breath, so... Maybe it can't actually shoot fire that hot, it's just an intimidation tactic? So, I think you actually could go with Clawitzer since it's proven to be a much more destructive threat. Again, like Blastoise, it launches water fast enough to punch through iron. So, it's nothing to scoff at. But you could debatably say it's Pyroar for this gen, so I'll just call it a draw and keep rolling. Funny enough for Alola, the fire from Incineroar's belt burns at 3600 degrees, which, if you recall, is the exact same temperature that Magmortar's fireballs burn at. But also recall that the bar for Sinnoh was abnormally low, so let's see if we can find something bigger. 
Plus, Incineroar's belt is almost always shown to have a very low range, so its firepower certainly has less versatility than others. Crabominable is also quite interesting, as in Pokemon Ultra Moon, the dex describes how this Pokemon can stop avalanches with a flurry of punches. Apparently, this Pokemon can also detach its own claws and fire them at opponents like rockets. Man, why wasn't that a signature move? I feel kind of cheated now. Alola is also home to a duo of Pokemon that are infamously known for, well, taking lives. Beware and Mimikyu. Now, while it's true that just the sight of Mimikyu will cause creatures to perish, Meowth even generously demonstrates this multiple times throughout the Sun and Moon anime, although it was notably censored every time in the dub. Mimikyu, at the very least, appears to be cognizant of this fact and keeps itself hidden at all times, despite sometimes being known as a very vicious creature. Beware, on the other hand, is known for giving killer hugs that snap the spines of people, and unlike Mimikyu, it will actually attempt to kill you if you trespass on its land. Now, I know that it takes 4,000 newtons of force to snap a bone. Actually, I didn't know that, I had to Google it. And although I'm not too sure how that stacks up next to a mysterious death curse or being able to bat back avalanches, Beware is the Pokemon that seems to pose the most general danger in Alola. In fact, many people in the region outright acknowledge Beware as Alola's most dangerous Pokemon. And if anyone else saw the Beware from the Sun and Moon anime, I think they concur with how astonishingly terrifying this Pokemon's strength is. So I think I'll actually agree with the games on this one and say that Beware is the generation's strongest. Now with the Galar region introducing dozens of Gigantamax forms, you know this region is going to be pretty stacked when it comes to power. Gigantamax Corviknights can apparently create winds stronger than any hurricane possibly could. For reference, the highest hurricane wind speed ever recorded was about 215 miles per hour, or 345 kilometers per hour. G-Max Sandaconda is said to have over 1 million tons of sand swirling around its neck. For reference, that would, like, barely cover much of the Sahara Desert, actually. It's not really that impressive. G-Max Intellion is said to shoot water at Mach 7 speeds, which is over 5,000 miles per hour, or about 8,500 kilometers per hour. But this isn't enough information to know if the water bullet would be lethal or not. Because pressure also matters. And also, practically speaking, most if not all of the water would probably vaporize at that speed before hitting a target any more than a few yards away. But the Pokedex does say that it can shoot a berry up to 9 miles away, so who do I really believe here? Real life or the game? But regardless, I think there is one that transcends this. G-Max Grimmsnarl is said to be able to leap over the world's largest building. Assuming the Pokemon world's largest building is the same as the real world's, that's about 2,700 feet to a need to vertically jump, plus 105 feet more for how tall G-Max Grimmsnarl is, so let's just round up to 3,000. Now, unfortunately, we don't know G-Max Grimmsnarl's exact weight or any other G-Max Pokemon's weight for that matter. They are presumably all too high for the Pokedex to register. But since G-Max Grimmsnarl kinda resembles the average human man, and the estimate estimated weight of a 100 foot tall man would be about 600,000 to 800,000 pounds, we can place him around that range. G-Max Grimmsnarl is actually 105 feet tall, so he's probably closer to 800,000 pounds. So using that weight, knowing that he has to jump 3,000 feet in the air, and he'll likely be airborne for approximately 40 seconds, using this clip of Ash's G-Max Pikachu jumping in the air to roughly determine the acceleration speed, it's admittedly not very scientific, but this is the best we have to go off of. So plugging all of that math in, not me though, because I'm not a math guy, I actually got another college friend to do this for me, we found that G-Max Grimmsnarl would jump with a force around 8.5 million pounds, which translates to roughly 8 tons of dynamite going off, resulting in a crater about 45 feet in diameter, which is surprisingly little environmental damage, like maybe a few blocks of a city at most. And even though the landing would measure around 3 billion joules of energy, that's still barely over a magnitude 3 earthquake. Come on, I want to see some carnage! Now, let's say even if Grimmsnarl could jump three times faster than G-Max Pikachu, at most the amount of force being generated by the jump would equal about 50 tons of TNT, which registers at just over a magnitude 4. I know that's a big upgrade from only 8 tons, but regardless, it can't compete at all with the power needed to level an entire mountain which is the potential power said to be held within the trunk of G-Max Kaparaja. For reference, the estimated amount of energy needed just to blow a small dent in an average-sized mountain would be about 50 million tons of TNT. Just to dent it, not even to finish the job. 
This means that out of all the Pokemon we've discussed today, Gigalith and G-Max Caparaja are in a tier of their own when it comes to environmental destruction. Minus Mag Cargo and Gardevoir, but that should go without saying. These two Pokemon are capable of unleashing more energy than we humans would ever hope to create with a single blast, which I guess is sort of a good thing. And so those are some of the strongest Pokemon that you can find in every Pokemon region. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Were there any that I may have glossed over or missed? There's a lot of Pokemon, so there's a high chance that probably happened. But hey, while you're down there, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I assume if you made it this far, then you must have liked the video decently enough, so why not subscribe? That'd be pretty nice. And as always, a big shout out to my amazing channel members. Thank you guys so much for your constant support, and I'll see you guys next time.